Hello everyone, I'm Lord Midas and welcome back to the Empire of Carpathia. In the last episode, we executed a lot of prisoners and also won quite a few duels with uh, Tsar Rodislav the Flayer of Carpathia, who is now sitting at 79 total kills. And we were basically looting this county over here to give some incentive to our vassals to declare a holy war over here because that's the only county that we need and also a couple from here from France to make our Slavic Union. And towards the end we were fighting um, an orthodox uprising over here. I've called my vassals to war to help me with that. And we were also looking forward to dueling one of our concubines, Branimira, who we recently made our rival just for that purpose. Also our son, Milan Rodislavovich, has come of age and is ready to um, get married. But I'm not very impressed with his stats, and I've seen that our next son, Fyodor, actually has much better stats, and I think he will also make a nice uh, martial um, education. I mean, he will also do very nicely with his martial, martial education. So I'm going to wait and see how he does. And if he does nicely, then here's the point. So I think Rodislav, the flare, is going to go ahead, go ahead and antagonize his first son, Milan, make him also his rival and then eventually duel him and kill him though i think that will make me um kinslayer so that's not very nice the other option could be that we could request excommunication from him i mean request to excommunicate him and then when he gets excommunicated we can uh, simply ask him to take the vows and then remove him from the uh, line like that or we could give him a bishopric, etc., and uh, remove him from the line like that. So there's a lot of different ways that we can do to get him out of the line, but we will think about that later on. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and get him married, though. So I've uh, found that there are some attractive people that we can get him married to, especially this Yaroslav, who is already a concubine somewhere. The concubine of uh, High Chief Kibar the Wolf. She's 26 years old. She's also lustful and attractive. So we're going to go ahead and get him married to her. And then eventually we will see how to get him, get him out of the inheritance line because I really do not want him to become the next emperor. And hail veteran! Canada Ruthless is giving us a mission. Rumors are that, the, that great spoils are waiting behind the walls of Smyrna. Waiting to be conquered by any daring raider and with enough grit and ambition. I assume I say, need say nothing more. Barony of Smyrna over here, that's in the Byzantine Empire. And they are quite strong. So this will be quite uh, a difficult mission. I'm going to go ahead and decline that. I think there's no point in doing it. And there it is, meeting of the minds. So in the last episode, we also had the opportunity to discuss some matters of life and death. And we summoned our council to discuss about if there's any possibility for me to live much longer than a normal human being. And here it is, a meeting of the minds. Your council convenes and the faces of your advisors speak of confusion. Why are we here, my lord? It comes with a hint of concern. You sit down and the suspense is almost tangible. As you leave the question hanging in the air. Finally, you speak and without disclosing much of your current nightly restlessness, you convey the message eloquently enough. Yeah, because we are shy like that, so we have some trouble explaining ourselves, I think. I want to discuss the concept of life and death. And I want to look into everlasting life. They nod, slowly, so what do you think? The spirit rises in the room as your counselors start to talk, some hesitantly, some gesturing wildly. They all have ideas. So we can have High Chief Ruslan, the, the second organizer search party. He's our marshal, and I think he's also malcontent, but he doesn't hate us. And your marshal will arrange a realm-wide search for any person in possession of knowledge on the matter. He seems doubtful regarding the whole endeavor, but maybe a healthy dose of skepticism is just what the job requires. Or I would rather not make any decisions on my own. And we will... This issue is best resolved by the council. They were hired for a reason after all. I think I'm going to ask him to organize a search party. He's also trusting and ambitious and winter soldier. <laughs> so maybe he will have a nice uh, he will have a nice time um, searching for things around in the cold Russian land, you know. He will organize a search party. Our heir has married. 
Hopefully my vassals can take care of this rebellion here and I don't have to bring my uh, retinue all the way south. I'm gonna continue to stand here and keep looting him. I think we're also doing pretty good on prestige now so we can actually recruit some more retinues. Of course, prestige based ones. Like that and also mix them up here with the main army. Young Theodore has finished his education in the Wizard War. It is evident that he has excelled in his studies. So that's it. That's our second child. Stubborn, zealous, brave, and skilled tactician. So also not very, very good. I mean, it's, it's okay. I will wait and see what becomes of uh, Rostislav Rodislavovich. But it, we should still get him married though. So let's find a strong or genius uh, woman for him. There are some, but they've also got hair lip and club footed, etc. going on. Oh, Anastasia, Corinne and Monegario. She might be actually fine. She doesn't have any bad traits and also 13 years old, so should be ready to marry pretty soon. Negative 400 for marrying a courtier, so I'm gonna wait. Let's search for genius. Alright, there's a 24 years old genius, but she's Tengri. Okay, I'm actually gonna try that. See. So, She's Turkish, and he also has kind of the uh, step-ish look, you know? So maybe the two of them can actually get along much better with each, with each other. So I'm going to invite her over as a wife of my son, and then ask her to convert to the iconoclast faith. Okay, so she hates us quite a bit now, but I'm going to give her a gift. And then demand religious conversion, like that. My steward tells me that his efforts at praising my name have met with great success of about 4,000 people. But I think we won't even really need it. But yeah, my all my uh, allies are going to come and unite with my army, aren't they? So I'm just going to send these Carpathian warriors over here to deal with this rebellion. And with these, how about we loot some more people while we're still standing here. The local saint Rodislav was an inspiration in many ways, and I wish I could live up to him. Lately, I have visited his tomb quite a lot, and, in, and listened to the tales of his miracles throughout his life. We could become just by living up to his ideals. Alright, um... We are cruel, but at the same time we could be just. I mean, I don't really mind being just and cruel at the same time. I don't want to be arbitrary with him. Or maybe we do. But now we're just gonna go ahead and become just. I think it's fine. He's a just but cruel ruler, not kind or merciful. And I think he is ready for another duel now. So let's go ahead and duel our concubine. No, we have... We can't be involved in a war and we can't be pregnant. So she's apparently pregnant. Okay. We now got the not notification now. So this is how the game works. The woman gets pregnant much earlier than you get the notification because it takes like two to three months after the pregnancy starts that you get the notification. Okay. It seems my vassals are going to attack them, so that's good. But they're losing. One of our courtiers, who as a woman, has finished her education in military matters. And immediately, somebody wants to marry her. Commander of Pannonia. Accept that. And a young Veleslav is full of energy and a will to get things done. That's my niece. Um, I will try to make her diligent. Yeah, that's the best trait possible. And how are things going on here? And what's that? Second Carpathian revolt is ended. What's going on here? Defending against a Vyacheslav Pannonia revolt. V what? Our half brother is revolting against the king of Pannonia. That's absolutely perfect. And what's the war that he's declaring? 
Vyasha's love of Pannonian revolts war for Pannonia. That's absolutely perfect because I want him to win. He's got 2.5k troops. He has the claim on the kingdom of Pannonia. And I want him to become the king. And he has 2.3k troops. So they can actually... He can actually win. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and ask this guy to surrender to Pannonian revolt. Lose 200 prestige in asking to do that. He might refuse or ask for something in return. But if he surrenders, that's perfect for me because uh, my half-brother again becomes the king of Pannonia. We've had quite some trouble holding that thing in our uh, dynasty in the past, and the revolt has ended. And wow, we, don't we have a lot of prisoners again to execute? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and ransom this woman and execute the rest. Oh, my liege, peace be with you, would like to back our plot to kill High Chieftess Agafia of Riazan. No way. And my daughter-in-law, she just came to the realm and is already plotting to kill my niece. Decline that for sure, and also, why is my spy master not aware of this plot? What's up with that, 24 spy master? Maybe he's also part of that plot? That's the reason? I don't know. And our niece. Yeah, so I had been looking for some nice matches for our nieces as well. And I saw that they have lover's pox. And this one especially was pregnant. And now we know that she's the lover of High Chief Vesavalod, the seducer of Lithuania. But I am going to go ahead and get them married because that's what they deserve. Even if they're being unfaithful. So I'm going to marry this one, Yevdokia, to the king of Poland. Actually, you know what? What she gets for being unfaithful like that is to marry, get married to a Tengri pagan. Nomad. Maybe they can teach her some manners. Send her off like that, and the other one is going to get sent off for Bugra. Like that. So we've been a little bit cruel with our nieces here, but that's what they deserve for this Lover's Parks tank. To the level-headed Tsar, Tsar Rodislav II. Though I stand to lose much, which <laughs> for sure you'll stand to lose your kingdom, I'm willing to surrender to the Vyacheslav of Pannonia Revolt in return for a large sum of money. I'm sure you understand. Wow. Wow, 30 gold, and he calls that a large sum of money. I'm definitely gonna give him that, and my half brother has now usurped the kingdom. And I think he owes us a favor now because we won the war for him. He could be a decent chancellor. Can I put him there? And he will be Glory Hound. Perfect. That's exactly what I want to see. Better chancellor than before, and also not malcontent. Have to appoint a commander. It is going to be my son, Fyodor. Why not? He's not really the perfect choice for the Emperor, so even if he dies, we have equally better options, I think. But I do have to go ahead and duel someone now, so... My concubine, why can't I duel her now? Oh, she's pregnant. Okay. So in the meantime, we are going to go ahead and uh, try to duel again, Chief Ferret of Moskva. Maybe this time he will not uh, run away like a coward. And for ambition, let's see the realm prosper, sure. We're not declaring war anytime soon. Finally, Chief Fedor of Moskva has chosen to accept your challenge to personal combat. We shall teach him. We shall get revenge, finally. For the great ruler, Tsar Milan the Blessed. Let's fight. The sun is beginning to set when I meet with Chief Fedot. My masterful short sword ready. After he clumsily dodges one attack, my next one lands perfectly. Frantically, the man attempts to cover his injured eye. But I have rarely seen so much blood. I walk away victorious and we don't kill him. Or I have been waiting for this, you filthy snake, and he dies. People will be upset about this merciless action, sure. I don't care. That's it. Our revenge. We have avenged our father. 
Settles are the Whisperer. May you rot in your grave, knowing that we have killed your son. Like that. Very happy to do that. All right, paying your passage. This is a message from our marshal who is um, doing a search for the thing for everlasting life. I'm not going to say I believe the stories, but we have picked up with some promising information, my lord, High Chief Ruslan II says. However, we could do with some more supplies if we are to journey even further. In fact, I would like to send word to hire scouts in certain more distant regions if we are to follow the leads and continue this mission. He pauses at the door, his posture strained. Of course, there are other ways to reach eternity, he sighs. When you open your mouth to respond indignantly, he interrupts you. I suppose the attitude comes with the job, master. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> okay, your marshal exits the room, his steps growing his grabs his steps growing fainter as you consider your options. I shall send word to the whole world if need be. We lose we spend a lot of gold. Finally, I'll spruce up the armory. And uh, maybe he's right, I'm not a believer either. And we stop it. Well, no, um, he will continue looking without any special aid. And this is the, like a medium d d donation that we can do. And this is a major donation. I'm, I'm going to go ahead with the major donation. Okay, so she's also married. And the ransom has been paid, which is the perfect time to go ahead with the mass execution. This is the third mass execution. Cause you to lose 20 piety, which I don't care about. And like that. Just beautiful, isn't it? Young, young Yevproxia plays hard and talks straight. Let's make her brave as well. She became honest. Okay. And here my troops are done looting. I'm not really accomplishing anything standing here. I'm going to go back over here. Especially combine up with the other army as well. Can't because they're not set to looting. Okay. Alright, we have got a chain of Orthodox uprisings now, haven't we? The third Carpathian Orthodox revolt. Tell me it's also down south, isn't it? Yes, it is. Again, 3,000 people. And uh, I'm going to bring my retinues down this time. We can't set into looting because we're at war. Okay. Then I'm going to also remove looting from this one so that we can actually combine them. A diet of bread and water does not satisfy me anymore. I need something else, something delicious and filling. We are no longer temperate. I have broken my fast with wine and quail. And we're looking for everlasting life as well. Alright, combine them and send them over here to kill the revolt. I'm not going to lead them. It is going to be a mana guildo. And then we'll loot uh, also this county over here from Africa. A son has been born to our son, and he's named Voloda. I'm happy with that. And also a daughter, so a twin, a twins were born. No! Uh, that's not uh, the son, the daughter of my son. That's my daughter. That was born to my concubine, who is my, uh, my, um, oh my god, rival. So we're going to go ahead and duel her as soon as we're done with this thing. Yeah, not involved in a war, etc. Okay. And uh, our nephew, Volodar, has finished education in stewardship. Fortune builder. Not very not very great, but okay. We're just going to get him married to uh, expand our dynasty. So, let's get him married to someone who is lustful so that we can expand our dynasty by quite a bit. And... Um, Actually, not lustful, because they can then probably get seduced by other people as well. So, Midas touched. 
Moore, who's already a concubine, 22 years old, I'm going to take her. And the uh, council member has expired. It's Pie Master. What happened to him? Okay. No idea what happened to him. Maybe he was a spy master? S I remember it was something with 24 skills. That wasn't him. Alright, so we have to appoint a new one. And it's going to be Vesevalod, who is a pragmatist. And I'm going to send him a gift. More technology points. And this time in culture advances. I'm going to keep putting points in majesty. All right, the Paulician heresy is spreading. And the Bogomilist heresy. Yeah, the Catholic faith is completely uh, low on moral authority. Technology. I just sent him there and he already has discovered some tech. A mystic appears. Your Marshal Ruslan looks lost for words. Master, I am not sure what to think. He shakes his head as he searches for the correct way to phrase himself. My Tsar, she is impressive. I can't quite put my finger on it, not to mention she has traveled far. His face conveys uncertainty and he shifts his weight. I see, you say, scratching your head. Ruslan breaks the silence. My lord, I can still send her away. What say you? Let us hear this woman out, and that will produce um, a woman at our court. This is a fool's errand, leave it be. Well, our character is paranoid. So I don't know what uh, this woman will do. If she can be trusted or not. We can hear her out, though. If, if we don't like her, we can send her away or kill her. And... Uh, Namanjie, this is the woman, mystic, horrifically scarred, okay, she's African pagan, can we demand religious conversion, will not marry, okay, well I'm not going to ask her to convert, I'm just going to wait and see what she says first, wow, more tech, and that's our daughter, the lisp and hair lip one. Dude P, yes, I think. And this guy's gonna get executed. And we're gonna send our army to loot over here in Africa. My well, concubine was preg is pregnant, but I was away, wasn't I? We are paranoid, so we will check it out. And uh, now is the time to go ahead with another duel. An intriguing encounter. The tall figure offers you a nod, but does not smile. She eyes you skeptically, measuring you up as much as you are her. Her clothing, her clothing, possibly intended to be modest, is foreign to you and you have trouble concealing your confusion. In fact, the warrior woman before you is bound to stand out in your court in more ways than one. I am Namanje. You are Rodislav, she says, as if somebody had forgotten, forgotten to introduce you. Perhaps you should have spoken the first words to assert your position, but the muscular woman makes you more than a little nervous. I hear you are looking to live forever, she finally says more a statement than question. I can help. I will accept your teachings, Namanje. Eternal life must be mine. We lose piety, and we get consorts with infidels. Temple vassal opinion negative 25. This is outrageous. Leave at once if you want to keep your head or blasphemy. In the name of God, imprison this filthy heretic. <laughs> we can turn it around on her. Uh, okay. Uh, well, our character is not that pious, etc. So, and we also have sympathy for pagan religions. So we will accept her teachings. Eternal life must be mine. Alright, we will see what happens. Consorts with infidels. I 
I have thought it over, I cannot be the father of my concubine's baby. Hire someone to find out. And we have to go for a duel. Before we get declared another revolt. Branimira, my concubine. Let's duel. As Branimira is a woman, this uh, challenge is widely frowned upon. We get uncivilized dueler for 10 years. Wow, it gives negative 10 vassal opinion. And I already am not very good with vassal opinion. I don't want more stacks of that. So, here's what we're, what we're gonna do then. We're gonna request excommunication. Excommunicate her, imprison her, and execute her like that. We're not gonna we're not gonna do a duel for no reason. We are going to duel other people though. Chief Farad of Lomza. I remember he used to be a priest and we couldn't uh, duel him at that point. But now I, sh I think we should be able to do it. I hope I'm not mixing it up with somebody else. And the spineless filthy lunatic Chief Farad has refused your challenge. Pathetic. Alright, Patriarch Svetazar Carpathia has excommunicated Branimir at the behest of Tsar Rodislav the Flare, my liege. Your wisdom and mercy are legendary. The vile excesses of Branimira can no longer be tolerated. We agree that she should be denied communion and be excommunicated. Okay, and then we go, we will, we're going to go ahead and imprison her. We just have a 57% chance. She's safely locked up in my dungeon. The world is a dangerous place, and devious plots are everywhere. Rumors have reached you that people are conspiring to kill you. I must be careful. But I think I have a real decent uh, spy master going on, so... Hopefully this should not be an, an issue. I can even appoint a better one in the form of Yerimich Ivarusa. Uh, I am going to do that, put him here, and uh, send him a gift as well. Also an honorary title to keep his uh, opinion of me as high as possible. And uh, I'm going to execute my concubine now. As she, is as she is excommunicated, no one will mind. Do that. Go to death by a boar. And that puts us uh, down already by one concubine. So we have to take another one. And no mind you. You know what? Uh, how about we make her our concubine? That would make 100% total perfect sense to me. Let's do that. Wow, it's absolutely perfect here. Consorting with infidels here. The maid I hired to gain my concubine's confidence has not found anything at all suspicious about her pregnancy. That's a relief. Wow, level 5 fort here. That's going to be very hard to assault if we ever want to try that. And young Yalise is a bastard child of Dobroslava, who used to be a concubine of somebody in the past, I believe. Has finished the education in stewardship, it seems. He has learned all the basic skills required. Thrifty clerk. Also hates us quite a bit. But I'm not going to send him away. I'm going to keep him. Actually, I don't really need him. I'm going to ask him to leave court. I don't want people who hate me in my court. We are paranoid. Alright, the fleeting. Branimir calls my name from the other side of the dining hall. Really, his name is also Branimir, just like the concubine that I recently just uh, executed? No, she, she was Branimira, okay. Alright, 99 kills. I really would like to make a century as fast as possible. Alright, standing on one of the long tables, challenging me to a fleeting. Branimir decides to focus the crowd's attention on how eager I am to join word games compared to actual fights. Really? He's a lunatic. Black Eye. He apparently might have been in a duel recently. I really would like to duel him. Alright. Never a man was born that could pleasure his lover as swiftly as you can. As you, alright. <laughs> what did your mother offend you? Off, offend? What god did your mother offend to curse you with such a revolting look? This is good against uh, envious and shy people. This is good against lustful people, which he isn't. I suppose being born with so few skills... Makes mediocrity, mediocrity desirable. Ambitious and proud people. He is proud. And you are truly the greatest example of your dynasty is mediocrity. This is against kind people. So I'm going to use this one, which is good against ambitious and proud people. 
I lost my temper, seeing that I was unable to rebuke Brandemir's insults, the crowd quickly sided with him, ensuring his victory. I don't understand what happened. This is the third or maybe the fourth fleeting that we've continuously lost. At the very least, after I admit defeat, Branimir calms me down and offers a drink for both of us, ensuring that it will it was all done in good fun, and it was not his intention to seriously offend me, if you say so. Alright, but I would really have liked to uh, duel him. A serious concern. Milan joins you after supper one evening. He initiates a conversation about the status of trade in the realm, but you notice that he seems distraught. You interrupt Milan and demand to know why he has sought you out. My dearest father, I fear for your life, he says earnestly and seizes your hand. Who is this sacrilegious heathen you have invited to your court? He promises that her promises are sweet, I am certain, but she cannot be trusted. Please, father, allow me to find her find out her true motive before it is too late. It is certainly better to be safe than sorry. You allow Milan to investigate Nomanje. Namanje, or you're right. How could I ever be so naive as to trust Namanje? And we can imprison her immediately. You know what? We kind of trust her so far. It's been okay ish. She's also our concubine, so we're doing fine on that. And uh, I will allow Milan to investigate her if he wants. And our youngest son, Rostislav. Is ready for his education. Playful, indolent. So probably he could make a nice uh, intrigue-ish person. But I think I'm going to go ahead with him in stewardship. Actually, intrigue, why not? At least let him be good in what he is good in. So I want to keep an eye here. I don't want to lose my uh, retinues to a big stack of Africa. All is well. Late one night, there is a knock on the door of your study. You open the door to find Milan standing there. You make a gesture for him to enter and ask... So it should be ask him to take a seat. Milan nervously twists... And here should be twists his hands together and makes him a moment... And takes him a moment to formulate a sentence. Please forgive me, father. It appears I was mistaken. From everything I have seen, Namanje seems to be most trustworthy and knowledgeable. Do, do forget everything I said. I am sorry if, if I caused you any trouble. I'm glad to hear it. So that's good. He also did not find anything strange about Namanje. So we are doing fine on that front, absolutely. As she's growing older, I can see that Suronia could use some guidance in one of my experienced areas, the art of war. This is my chance to make an effort for the sake of education, but what can I offer? Nothing. She must learn her on her own. I don't want to be I don't want to become stressed. In honor of the ancestors, Namanja sits on the floor when you enter the room, what looks like polished pieces of bone strewn out in front of her. She motions for you she motions for you to join her. You have neglected your spirit, she says, eyes closed. You shift uncomfortably in your seat. I have not, you mumble. Her eyes open at this and she stares at you, a steely cold look, and you retract your statement. You must sacrifice, she declares. Very well, you reply, thinking you'll have your learned patriarch Svetozar see to it. As if she could read your mind, Namanja shakes her head. You must do this on your own. Do you, do you see what I see? You notice a pattern in the bones. It looks just like an antelope. How curious. You lose gold and you perform the sacrifice using an antelope. Order in from far away, maybe from Africa that we are already looting. Or a field of crops. Beautiful. You will perform the sacrifice using a barrel of the finest grain in Novgorod. A man falling. What do you want from me? You refuse to perform the sacrifice. You fail Namanja's quest and she leaves your court. We're going to go ahead with the antelope. Spend some gold in that. How curious. The world is a dangerous place and devious plots are everywhere. Rumors have reached you that people are conspiring to kill your wife, Eustina. Not a fan of that. But I'm not going to send her in hiding either. We have a decent uh, spy master working on it. All right, very nice. We looted something. Next one is a city, mosque, mosque. Should be some nice gold coming from here. 
Oh, King Masla Sharp, Sharp Tongue has usurped the title Kingdom of Pomerania from Count Stefan the Usurper. And this is actually pretty good because now he's Slavic and we have the law that we can revoke titles from infidels. So I am going to go ahead and revoke his Kingdom of Pomerania, which he will definitely accept immediately, and the High Chiefdom of Kuyavia from him. And then I will give this Kingdom of Pomerania also to one of my dynasty members. This will be very good. But I think we will do that then in the beginning of the next episode. So this has been a very nice one. We're doing pretty nicely on the concubine front here, Namanche. She, she's... Oh, Namanche, they're fearless. Look at that. And she's also guiding us towards everlasting life, which is exactly what this character wants, you know, because he's he's like that. And we're going to also continue to try to do dual um, our rivals and maybe also make some more rivals. I, I noticed that we're not antagonizing every, anybody right now. We will also set somebody up to antagonize in the next episode. So thank you very much for joining me for this one. If you liked it, please click thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for future content, and let me know in the comments about your feelings about this playthrough. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.